If you were to travel back to the time of the dinosaurs and point a telescope at the planets wandering the night sky, it is extremely likely that you would not be able to see Saturn's rings. <coughs> Let me repeat that. You would not be able to see Saturn's rings. I know, right? Mind blown. I'm Eric Malachite, and we're about to delve into a new hypothesis for the origin of one of our solar system's most iconic and beautiful features, its rings. Saturn. If there was a real hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy, this gas giant and its beautiful rings would probably be at the top of the list of places to watch Earth get bulldozed by the Vogon constructor fleet. Gotta have that new hyperspatial express route, right? But as old as the solar system and the planets are, over 4 billion years to be approximate, Saturn's rings are incredibly young. How young, exactly? Well, it turns out that they're about 100 to 200 million years old, which means that the dinosaurs were probably in the middle of the Cretaceous period, eagerly awaiting the asteroid that would usher in the reign of the mammals. Oh, and I guess human civilization and stuff too. Over the years, scientists have proposed all kinds of hypotheses for how those rings could have developed. They've considered causes such as comets, crumbling moons, and debris getting caught in Saturn's gravitational field, to name a few. But the fact that this iconic feature is so young has created a problem in the scientific community. It's one thing to suggest that an ancient feature on a planet could have been caused by an impact with a larger body, especially when you can use the solar system's most tumultuous periods to provide a mechanism, right? But when those features are incredibly young, you need a little more evidence than, well, this makes a good story, so we're going with that. And luckily, it turns out that there is some evidence for the hypothesis that suggests Saturn's rings might have been formed by a close encounter with one of its moons. A lost moon that a team supported by MIT, NASA, and the National Science Foundation have dubbed Chrysalis. But what is that evidence? Well, to talk about that, we have to first talk about Saturn's unique relationship with Neptune, or in this case, its assumed resonance with the ice giant. Saturn's rings share its axial tilt of 26.7 degrees. Earth shares a similar axial tilt, clocking in at 23.5 degrees. This means a few things, one of them being that Saturn is one of the few places in the solar system that experiences seasons. No, not you, California. But to astronomers, this as well as the fact that Saturn's axial precession is virtually identical to Neptune's is a telltale sign that the two celestial objects could be linked. Between 2004 to 2017, astronomers hoping to explain its axial tilt were keen to find evidence for Saturn and Neptune's supposed resonance. Interestingly enough, thanks to observations made by NASA's Cassini spacecraft, they discovered that Titan, Saturn's most interesting moon, was moving away from the gas giant at a rate of 11 centimeters per year. That's far faster than they'd originally predicted. Still, this led scientists to conclude that the moon's migration and gravitational pull was likely keeping Saturn in resonance with Neptune. But there was one major problem with this, and that was the fact that one crucial piece of the puzzle was missing, Saturn's moment of inertia. In physics, a body's moment of inertia is a quantitative measure of the rotational inertia of that body. Basically, what scientists were looking for was the opposition that Saturn displays while its rotation is altered by the application of turning force. Jack Wisdom, guy with an awesome name and professor of planetary science at MIT and lead author of the study, along with the rest of his team, sought to figure out what this moment of inertia was, using Cassini's final observations as the basis for their math. Finding Saturn's moment of inertia revealed that Saturn isn't in resonance with Neptune after all, <coughs> though the two bodies are close to it. However, they also concluded that at one point, perhaps for the majority of Saturn's ringless 4.5 billion year history, the two had been in resonance, but something had caused them to fall out of sync. And what was that cause? A climactic encounter with one of Saturn's moons, of course. I mean, it's in the title and thumbnail, after all. The reason for Saturn losing resonance with Neptune 100 to 200 million years ago was Chrysalis, a suspected lost moon that, like Icarus and the Sun in mythology, flew too close to Saturn. 
The team suggests that Chrysalis's orbit would have become more and more chaotic, causing it to experience close flybys with Titan and Iaptus. Eventually, this would have brought it incredibly close to Saturn as well, grazing it and causing it to be pulled apart in a violent series of events that would have led to most of Chrysalis's material impacting the surface of the planet. These events would also have left plenty of material to fan out across the planet's axial plane, eventually leading to the creation of the rings we enjoy today. Jack Wisdom says that just like a butterfly's chrysalis, this satellite was long dormant and suddenly became active, and the rings emerged. In order to test this hypothesis, the team used simulations that wound back Saturn and Neptune's orbits to the estimated time when they would have been in resonance with each other. But this version of the simulation did nothing to explain why Saturn would have fallen out of resonance. After a lot of trial and error, adding their mystery moon, one around the size of Iaptus, Saturn's third largest moon, to the simulation seemed to solve this problem. Wisdom went on to say that it's a pretty good story, but like any other result, it will have to be examined by others. But it seems that this lost satellite was just a chrysalis, waiting to have its instability. For now, the scientific community seems to be impressed with the hypothesis, but we'll have to wait and see whether further studies of Saturn confirm it as a bona fide scientific theory. If you dug this short science video, be sure to do all that algorithmic jazz and join our Discord to make friends with science and sci-fi nerds like you. And hey, check out all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time, Space Cowboy.